Turkey burgers, let's face it, they're not that good. <laughs> the thing that you tune in to watch me make, it's not very good. <laughs> I, I, it's the best turkey burger I ever had, but it's kind of like saying, you know, those are the best jean shorts I've ever worn. <laughs> My name is Andrew Ray. I make a channel called Binging with Babish, where I recreate foods from movies and television. Today we are recreating my first ever recreation, the Chris Traeger patented Traeger Turkey Burger from Parks and Recreation. Chris Traeger challenges Ron Swanson to a burger cook-off to see if he can make a turkey burger taste better than a beef burger. And he dresses it up and makes this, this, this burger with papaya chutney and black truffle aioli and a Taleggio cheese crisp, which is basically just a long list of bullshit foodie buzzwords that I feel like the writers were having a good time with. So I was like, what would that actually taste like? I made it, I really enjoyed it, as they said in the TV show. It tasted as good as Beyonce smells. And now here we are at Vice, a place where I tried to get a job nine years ago and failed. Got ourselves an eggplant here. We're going to boil these lightly. These guys are pretty absorbent, so you kind of want to be generous. You want to get that flavor in there. We're seasoning this with a little bit of salt and pepper. It's good to season all of your ingredients at every stage. You're layering flavor and you're getting, you're, you're, you're getting I don't know if that's true or not. But anyway, we're seasoning this, we're gonna throw it in the oven. For like 30 to 40 minutes, 375 degree oven, until it's nice and brown and soft and we can puree it and add it to our turkey. Now we're going to make a papaya chutney. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this papaya here. Becoming a YouTuber is the new American dream. Ask kids what they wanna be when they grow up. It used to be like astronaut, firefighter, and now it's YouTuber. You're basically just getting paid to be yourself and it's a rare thing to be able to do for a living. I'm very, very grateful for it. Just chopping this up into uh, manageable pieces. So I'm gonna throw these in a small saucepan here. This is some apple cider vinegar, golden raisins, saffron. I'm a home cook and um, I try to encourage other home cooks to be adventurous in the kitchen. Try new stuff and see it succeed or see where it failed, see where you made a mistake and learn from it. You know, that's, that's important. I'm just mixing this up here a little bit, let everybody get to know each other. We're probably gonna cook it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> let the papaya soften and then we can, you know, just have kind of a nice soft spreadable chutney. My channel is very much a happy accident. I was uh, feeling creatively stifled and pretty depressed. I went to therapy and I started uh, getting getting help and then I decided, you know, I, I just need to start making things again. The first test video that I made, I just made a smoothie out of stuff that I found in the fridge just to see if I could edit it together in a compelling and fun way. My favorite shows, I like to put them on in the background while I'm working. And Parks and Rec was on in the background. I noticed this burger cook off and I was like, huh, what would that actually taste like? And I was like, huh, maybe I should do that on camera. Explore your passions, you never know what's gonna happen. He specified Taleggio in the show, and this is where I deviate from the original because it's just not possible to make a cheese crisp from Taleggio. It's a soft, washed rind cheese, and it's just not gonna uh, melt and crisp up the same way. If you ever try to do that with brie, you'll know what I'm talking about. You're not gonna make a cheese crisp out of that. Good luck. We have Parmesan and some Fontina cheese. When you melt aged cheeses, the, the fat leaks out. But we want that to happen in this case. It's gonna make the cheese solid, sort of like deep fry in their own fat in the oven, and then you end up with a nice crispy, guy. Somebody needs to reinvent the cheese grater because it's dumb. Like, there's no good way for, or like, flattering way for me to hold this where it looks like, what's the pro way, I guess, you know, to do it just on the table, that's the way to do it. You want to grate into a bowl, you're shit out of luck, buddy. We're going to bake these for seven to nine minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We want it to be nice and deep brown around the edges, hopefully a little bit lighter in the center. You're going to see when these come out of the oven, it's going to be a nice thing that you want to put in your mouth. We're going to make some truffle aioli. So this is an Americanized shortcut aioli that's really just a thin mayo, and we're adding some black truffle to it to make it all fancy schmancy. Crack on the flat of the table like that. And look at that, it still cracks open just like I cracked it on the edge of a, of a pot. And it, my yolk is most certainly going to be preserved, even though we're blitzing it up, it doesn't really matter in this case. But if you're trying to keep your yolk solid, then you know, listen to old babby. I'm also just gonna add a little squeeze of lemon. Uh, one of the easiest ways to make an aioli is with an immersion blender. So into the egg yolks we go and slowly begin to drizzle this down the side. Oh, should I add the black truffle? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's in. Okay. If this breaks, it's no longer my fault. Come on. Get in there. Get chopped up. Okay. I see a little black. That's cool. Now it's real black truffle aioli. Rocking. Okay. So we got a nice thick, rich, truffle aioli. 
There's the eggplant. Just came out the oven. We want it to be soft. We want it to be something that we can scoop out and add to the burger uh, just for some more uh, enriched flavors. I'm gonna chop this up a little bit. Does this work? Yeah, okay, that works. I, I want this to be a really fine, smooth paste because I don't, I don't want any strands of eggplant in my burger. It's a ghastly sound. All right, got a nice paste here. Good stuff. And the last thing that we're gonna do is make the turkey burger. One tablespoon soy sauce here, Marmite, a yeast extract. It's a disgusting yeast extract. And we've got anchovy paste. So I'm just kneading this all together. Again, ideally, you don't wanna overwork your meat too much, but in this case, we gotta get these ingredients dispersed. Try oiling these guys a little bit, boop, boop, to prevent any stickage down the line. I'm, get, I'm making these pretty big because we have pretty big buns. Because we haven't been in the gym, am I right, fellas? Uh, because we have some large buns and because there's nothing sad in the world than having a little meatball in the center of a big old bun. So good. those are good, some solidly sized burgers and I'm just gonna put a nice divot in the center. This seems like a good idea. Boop, 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 boop. Just mash these up until it's gonna be, you know, something spreadable. We want something that we can spread. All right, look at that. That's a chutney, if I've ever seen a chutney. And I have seen a chutney, if you know what I mean. I've seen chutneys, that's what I mean. Anyway, always, always toast your buns. You give me a burger on an untoasted bun and uh, we're gonna have words. There we go, that's righteous. I'm gonna lube this guy up and just go to town on him. There we go. Now this is a, a good opportunity to start seasoning. That makes me happy. Let's flip this. That's that's a, as far as turkey burgers go. It's a pretty it's a pretty nice looking turkey burger. You know, I'm clocking doneness on this burger, so I'm gonna take them out, put them aside. So uh, turkey burgers are done, and now we just gotta put them together. Oh my god, I didn't add the fucking eggplant. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, I forgot to add the eggplant. Uh, so just, just don't add the eggplant. Is my is my um, suggestion that uh, you don't need to. This is still gonna be a perfectly tasty burger. We added all these umami boosting ingredients. The um, eggplant might have added structure. It might have added a little more body and roundness to the flavor, but this is still gonna be a perfectly beautiful turkey burger. Don't beat yourself up too much for mistakes, even if you make them on munchies. <laughs> all right, so we have our toasted brioche bun. On the bottom bun goes the chutney. And on top of that, goes our greens. Burger goes on top of the microgreens. And then our Taleggio cheese crisp. And on top of that, black truffle aioli. And there you have it, the patented Traeger turkey burger. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice cross section. Normally I like to have a cheese stretch, but we got crispy cheese in this case. Hey, it's a good looking cross section. That's actually not half bad. It's definitely not nearly as good as a beef burger. And it is a mishmash of flavors. Like these flavors don't belong in the same burger. Uh, this does not taste as good as Beyonce smells. I have smelled Beyonce and it, I assume she smells great. <laughs> and this, uh, this tastes okay. As far as the turkey burger goes, I'm not mad at it. What we learned how to do here is not make the best turkey burger in the world. It's a pretty good turkey burger. But we did learn how to make is how to make a cheese crisp, how to make a papaya chutney. The burger itself is moist and flavorful, better than most turkey burgers I've ever had. My cookbook, the Binging with Babish Companion Cookbook, is available for order now. You can go to bingingwithbabish.com slash cookbook. And my channel, Binging with Babish, Basics with Babish, Being with Babish, all available on YouTube right now, along with munchies. Here's a burger for you guys to split seven ways.